Hi, so uh, we are going to continue our chapter 4 bond, alright? Um, or in Bahasa, we call it also bond, B-O-N, okay? So for bonds, it's actually, um, there are uh, two types of calculations, uh, main types, two main types of calculation. I will let you know further later on. And firstly, we are going to discuss the characteristic and features of the bond itself. So it's quite important for you to understand uh, the concept of the bond itself before we are going to dis uh, we are going to discuss on the uh, the calculation part, right? So bond is a long term debt instrument issued by any corporations or government. Why long term? Normally, for a bond, uh, when the bond, uh, bond uh, is actually being issued, it will have a kind of more than one year uh, maturity period. It could be like uh, up to two to five years. It could be up to ten years, twenty years, or some government bond uh, also up to thirty years. Right? So depends on the issuer. So why is a long term uh sorry why it is called debt instrument Of course it is a debt instrument whereby when uh, any or any organizations or corporations or company who issued uh, the bond they are actually uh, uh making such a debt um issuance right so when the time comes, when the maturity is um, uh, over, they have to pay back all the principal uh, towards the investors. Let's say Bank Islam issue a bond for five years, right? Um, so after the five years, they have to pay back all the principals when the bond is matured. Pay to whom? Pay to the investors or the bond holder right so even though the uh, company is being liquidated because of uh, bankruptcy or because of merger and so on they are still um, eligible to pay for the bond towards the bond holder so yes it is a debt instrument so why they are actually raising the bond or issuing the bonds they are actually uh, raising a a kind of large fund for them to go uh, or to continue further with their projects or um, investment. So, for example, let's say a uh, government uh, uh, having uh, a kind of uh, difficulty to uh, complete a project, a large project. So, maybe they need around uh, 5 billions of money for example so one of the way that they can raise this 5 billion of money is by issuing bond okay so the investors who are uh, interested to buy the bond maybe because of the interest or coupon rate uh, being promised uh, so they are interested to buy the bond okay so this is one of the way the government or any other corporations could actually raise some fund, right? A uh, bond can be like a negotiable, publicly traded. Uh, yes, it yeah, uh, it is a kind of long-term debt securities, and it's it is also uh, called uh, as fixed income securities. Why fixed income securities? Because bond have coupon interest payment let's say if the issuer promised to pay uh, up to five percent interest payment or coupon interest payment per year so it means that each and every year the bondholder will get the five percent coupon being promised so that's why we call it uh, as fixed income securities the maturity value or mv or face value of the bond uh, is the stated value right so in the case of malaysian bond the face value is usually rm1000 or we call it as par value right so started with rm1000 so uh, as mentioned earlier 
So this uh, um, bond actually provides two types of income. The first one is the current income. This is what we call the uh, fixed income uh, earlier, right? So derived from where? Derived from interest payment or coupon interest rate, which I have mentioned earlier. If it's stated that uh, it's going to pay 5% coupon, right? So they will get uh, those 5% coupon interest rate uh, each and every year. If it's stated uh, per annum, lah, per year. If it's stated... Uh, um, semi-annually, it means that they are going to pay uh, two times a year, if 5%. So, you are going to divide by 2.5%, uh, maybe at uh, um, half of the year, six months, and uh, another 2.5% by the end of the year, right? So, this is the what we call the current income. What about capital gain? Capital gain is being derived when the redeemable price of more than principal. Let's say the principal is RM1000, but when uh, the bondholder try to uh, sell the bond at the market, so the bond is uh, at quite a high value or um, what we call is premium. Let's say at the time they are trying to sell the bond, the bonds is uh, ca actually can be uh, sold at RM one thousand two hundred. So the the bondholder will actually receive a capital gain of two hundred, right? Uh, so this is what we call capital gain. So now let's take a look on the features, some features of the bond, um, uh, as a brief one lah. All right. Uh, so, bond interest and principal. So, the interest is referring to the coupon rate. So, what are the stated coupon rate on the bond? So, that is the fixed income that we are, the bondholder are going to receive, right? Whether it is stated annual or semi-annually depends on the bond, right? Uh, the discount rate or the capitalization rate is the uh, is dependent on the risk of the bond and is composed to the risk free rate plus a premium for risk. So <coughs> it is it is a kind of uh, depending uh, on the types of the bond itself. Okay, for example, uh, I'll give you one example. If a one thousand bond with annual coupons of eight percent. Pays RM, uh, of course, it will pay RM eighty ringgit uh, annually if it's if it's stated annually. All right. Uh, how do you get this eighty ringgit? So eight percent times one thousand face value. So you will get. It means that in terms of RM, in terms of money, will the bondholder will get this eighty uh, ringgit per year, right? If it stated that the annual coupon uh, is eight percent, if five percent, he or she will get RM fifty ringgit. If it's twelve percent, he or she will get RM one hundred and twenty ringgit. Uh, so that's how you calculate. Uh, calculate the coupon in RM, right? So if it's stated uh, uh, annually, so uh, each and every year he or she will get the eighty ringgit. Okay, the bondholder will get eighty ringgit per year. If it's stated semi annually, then it will pay RM for forty twice in that year. Okay, so maybe forty for the first half uh, six month, and another RM forty for the uh, during the end of the year. Right, so they will pay if if it's semi annually. The first quarter, maybe they will. Uh, sorry, the first six month they will get. Uh, he or she will get this RM forty ringgit and uh, another forty ringgit by the end of the year. Okay, so this is this is a uh, example of one bond. Right, one bond. If the bondholder uh, buy, let's say. Uh, ten bonds, okay, for the same bond, so you they will get more, right? Ah, uh, okay. So this is uh what we call uh uh the interest or uh, coupon being uh given to the bond holder or the investor. 
But there are some bond which is a kind of zero coupon bond. Okay, ada juga yang mana bond tersebut tidak memiliki apa-apa bayaran kupon seperti bond yang di atas tadi. Right? So, bond that pays no interest but of course it will sell at a deep discount from its face value. So, it will provide a kind of compensation to the Uh, to the investors, okay, in the form of price appreciation. How? Let's say bond Z has a 1,000 face value and 30 years of life, okay, up to 30 years to maturity. So, the appropriate uh, discount rate is 10%. So, uh, what are the value of this actually zero coupon bond? Okay, let's say, right? Uh, given the discount rate, because this bond have uh, no uh, fa uh, sorry no coupon interest payment such as in this one, so uh, let's say uh, based on the bond, they have a kind of discount rate of ten percent. So we are try to calculate the value of the bond. How one thousand times by the present value interest factor of ten percent times thirty years. So you will get. Around fifty-seven ringgit, or you can call it fifty-seven dollars. No, mat, no problem, right? So let's say fifty-seven ringgit. So it means that the bond when bond is being sold at a very much discount, right? So it's supposed to uh, uh to be sold at one thousand face value, but since this is a kind of zero coupon bond, so the investor would. Uh, have a gain, uh, a kind of gain profit over here, right? So the value is only fifty-seven dollars, right? So this is the way uh, the bond works, right? Uh, so this is what does it mean by the discount, the discount rate over here, right? Uh, this is what does it mean by the discount rate, right? Bond also have maturity date, alright? So depends on the bond. Uh, some of the bond, let's say for a ton. Term bonds, okay, it has a single or fairly lengthy maturity date and most types of, uh, the most common type of the bonds being issued in Malaysia as well. So, for example, 20 years. Uh, so, it, if it's 20 years, let's say it is being issued in uh, 1999, so it will mature at 2019. Just a simple example, okay. If we if it's a kind of serial bond, it means that it have different maturity dates. Okay, up five to twenty within a single issue. For example, it might have a twenty annual maturity date for a twenty years bond. Let's say from this ninety nine uh, to twenty nineteen, it will have twenty different actual uh, annual maturity dates. Uh, if it's a kind of C serial lah. Uh, so, dalam masa 20 tahun tu, dia boleh uh, mecet bila-bila saja. Alright. Uh, If it's a kind of serial bonds. Okay. And bond also have a call features. Okay. Whereby the bond uh, could be called earlier uh, prior to maturity. So, bond juga mempunyai uh, call features. Boleh dipanggil balik oleh company yang mengeluarkan bond tersebut, let's say if it's Bank Islam, so Bank Islam could call back the bond even uh, before the maturity. Let's say the maturity is within 20 years, but after the year 10, the Bank Islam would call back the bond. So, yes, so this is what we call the call features of the bond, right? So, some of the bonds are freely callable. Some of the bond are non-callable, meaning it is being prohib prohibited be, uh, from uh, being called. And some of the bond, we have deferred call. So deferred call means the issuer cannot call until after a certain length of time. Let's say the bond is 20 years to maturity, but the bond can only be called after the year 10. Alright, so this is what we call deferred call, right? And we also have a few other terms I will explain further.